I'm Robin Williams, an interventional radiologist. I'm going to show you how to do an, an iliac artery stent on the Mentis Vist C simulator. We're going to start with the standard J tip guide wire, which will advance into the abdominal aorta. And over that, we're just going to insert a six French sheath. And we'll leave that in the iliac at the moment. Through that sheath, we're then going to insert a pigtail diagnostic catheter. And we'll place that in the distal abdominal aorta, just above the aortic bifurcation. We'll remove the guide wire, let the pigtail form. So with the pigtail catheter in the distal abdominal aorta, just above the aortic bifurcation, we're now going to do an angiogram using the power injector just above the aortic bifurcation to demonstrate the anatomy we need to treat. We're going to inject 20 mils of contrast at 12 mils a second. And there we can clearly see a uh, tight stenosis of the distal common iliac artery immediately above the bifurcation into the external iliac artery in the profunda. We'll just pause that and then insert the guide wire, remove the pigtail catheter, try and keep the tip of the guide wire just in shot. and change the catheter for something that will allow us to cross the aortic bifurcation. So we use a five French selective. We're gonna use a crossover catheter. So we're going to insert this over the J-tip wire, above the bifurcation. At this stage, we're gonna remove the J-tip wire and replace it with something that will let us better cross the lesion and cross the aortic bifurcation. So we're just going to use an angled hydrophilic wire. We're going to withdraw the selective catheter down to the level of the aortic bifurcation. This stage we're going to advance the sheath to give us a little bit more support. And this is a curved crossover sheath as well. At this stage, I'm struggling to find the aortic bifurcation, so we can just repeat the angiogram. Inject a little bit of contrast. As you can see, I'm clearly too low. So we'll advance the caster over the guide wire. And there we go. The caster's deflecting as we expected. Again, give it a little bit more support by advancing the sheath, and this can be done over the guide wire with care. I think we need to take the sheath a little bit further in.
and advance the catheter over the bifurcation. At this stage, I think we need to take a better picture of the lesion we're going to treat. We can recenter slightly and do a subtracted run. We can use this to fade in and out over our working image so we have a map of the lesion we're trying to cross. Again, I think we need a little bit more support from the crossover sheath. So advance that, no further than the tip of the catheter. Advance the catheter a little bit further. Then angle the guide wire to cross the lesion. And we'd like the guide wire to go down the external iliac artery. We follow that with the catheter and I'll advance the sheath just a fraction more to give us maximum support. At this stage we'll remove the hydrophilic guide wire and replace it with a stiff non-hydrophilic wire which will give us far more support and allow us to treat the lesion more safely. And to fade that image out altogether Advance the guide wire carefully and place the distal end of the guide wire just in view and remove the catheter. At this stage we need to do a, another angiogram. The stiff wire will have, have distorted the anatomy. So another subtracted angiogram through the sheath and again another reference image. At this stage we need to select um, the appropriate stent. We know from the preoperative CT scan that that is an 8mm by 3cm stent. So we can select this from the menu. and insert it over the guide wire. Again, trying to keep the tip of the guide wire just in view. And then go very carefully when crossing the lesion. We'll just put a little bit of contrast in. help us identify the lesion, the sheath needs to come back a little bit. To be as accurate as possible we can do another little subtracted run here. And this will show us that the stent needs to be advanced very slightly. We can fade the image in, out, in and out to demonstrate the correct positioning, but then fade all the way out to deploy the stent. And we can see the stent is nicely centered on the stenosis, but is not fully expanded. So we remove the stent delivery system and we'll insert a balloon and the correct size is a seven millimeter balloon. Generally we use one millimeter smaller than the stent size or the stent is sized one millimeter greater than the vessel size. Insert the balloon across the lesion. We don't want to extend, take the balloon into the external iliac artery and we're close to the bifurcation so we need to be careful. But then inflate the balloon. Until we see the waste disappear on the stent. But we're also guided by the patient. And if they start to experience 
pain then proceed very carefully. This can be a sign of impending rupture. Deflate the balloon and remove it, but leave it on the guide wire. At this stage, do another angiogram through the sheath just to make sure we haven't caused a rupture. Again, a high quality subtracted angiogram. And this will demonstrate a well treated lesion with minimal residual stenosis. And then the one final job is to check the superficial femoral artery. We know from the preoperative CT scan that there is a stenosis of the superficial femoral artery. And so we should just go and take a picture of that, an angiogram of that. You use any of the diagnostic or selective catheters to do so. We'll just advance that through the sheath, past the lesion we've just treated, into the external iliac artery, remove the guide wire, centre the image intensifier further south, and we can take some angiograms from the external iliac artery downwards. So on that run, we can see the bifurcation of the common femoral artery into superficial and profunda femoris. Centre further down, with slight overlap, and repeat the run. And there we can see the site of the stenosis at the adductor hiatus as it becomes a popliteal artery, and that's a very typical site.